this is kind of your really your signature scene yeah the mill now the mill was scratch yes. built right yes. you like planned yeah it it, um, it was generated from a photograph in a book uh, by uh, Johnston called uh, Whistle Blows No More. Okay, yeah, you told me that. Before. And uh, this was a mill in California um, in the Converse Basin where they cut uh, redwoods and uh, large uh, sugar pine. Uh, I'm using it to cut sugar pine. Um, from the photograph, which intrigued me so much because of the, it, the piling and the, just the collection of shapes of the roof and the windows and so on, um, I scaled up a drawing that pretty much matched and let all of this configure correctly and then scratch build it. It's all individual sticks. This does come apart. Uh, this area lifts off. The whole building then lifts off, and then the okay. floor so itself lifts off of the piling underneath. Okay. So there's four structures there actually to work on inside. The whole thing is built on a shelf from here to here that will slide out. And in order to, it's captured here by this section right here. This lifts up. Okay. And then I can access the shelf below and just slide the whole thing out and then I can, can work on it at a table because I just can't reach in there right this gives me access to the yeah, lights I as well think you'd want to do it if you no, didn't really have this, to yeah no, open yeah. once yeah I wouldn't think you'd want to do it if you no. didn't really have to yeah. no but you know the you color uh, cover the seams with clay and then uh, put your ground cover over it so you don't notice it and then you can See, if you look real close here in the pond, um, there is a seam okay. that is covered also with uh, clay to match the coloration. Okay. I chose not to put a water surface with the plastic right. water and all that because it's just murky and muddy and it's going to stay that way. Right. That makes sense. The log dump is modeled after a, a real location up in English Bay, Skagit County and which they built the brow log here on top of a rock outcropping that comes out underneath it. And so that was an inspiration for this particular log dump. Okay. Um, so the, in operations then, how you're getting two log trains down, how often do the finished lumber loads leave and are those going to Coal Creek or Martin or? They would go to Coal Creek initially and then assembled into trains that are going on out to Morton, out to the outside world. Okay. Morton is my connection to the Denver Rio Grande. Okay. And uh, theoretically, they built it to Sumter Valley and then across White Pass <laughs> to Morton. Okay. And then here, that's my connection to the outside world. So there is an operating crew in, in one of my sessions. It's optional, uh, depending on how many people I have. but. Often there's in the scheme, there would be a person here that would assemble loads and take them down to Coal Creek, bring back empties and any other uh, things that would be coming to the mill. Moving lumber and logs is a whole lot of the operation, but there's also other things. You have to bring in parts and material supplies into the, into the uh, log mill. So there's a bit of additional activity in operating here. Uh, one other thing, I have a tanker a loading, tank loading operation here, which supplies fuel oil to the boiler house over behind. Okay. Um, does the boiler house come out too, or does it just slide out on the whole it, thing? It just sits there. Okay. It, it, it's just, it's not anchored at all. I chose not to put a, uh, a slice burner. I just did, really didn't have room. Um, so theoretically, they uh, consume in the boiler all of the, the cuttings. Okay. Um, and so there's no need for the additional slice burner. 
and then I just scratch built the uh, storage shed to keep the, the material dry as possible. Um, but theoretically, everything moves through the mills pretty quick. Well, and this is a good spot to ask about your your backdrop. You said you had somebody that painted that in for yeah, you? Yeah, a local artist, young man by the name of Ian Henderson, painted all of my backdrop and touched up the walls uh, to try to get a perspective uh, of distance. This location is actually from a photograph that I shot at Mineral, Washington, where the Mount Rainier Scenic Railway had its shops. Okay. And if you're standing at the shops and looking north, that's what you see. So he just took that profile and some of the features and painted it. It's well done and it, and it goes well with everything, you know, it blends well. Yeah. yeah. Then I've described, these are two sheets of what's called bendy plywood. Okay. And they will bend to a very sharp radius um, and it's material that's sandable and then you just paint the blue paint on it as the backdrop and then he painted over that. It's all done in acrylics. Okay. This area is Lake Johnston, uh, named after a good friend of mine, J.J. Johnston, and it uh, is on a 2% grade coming up. I wanted a long stretch of single track that I could use to shoot videos or pictures of train sets coming up or coming down. The other thing is at the end of the lake there is a, an ice house and there's a loading dock and a place where they cut the ice in the winter and load into the ice house to store it and then periodically loads of ice are taken out of there and sent to the town and all the way up to the log camps um, to work in their, their, uh, their kitchens and so on. Okay. This is Bunkers and uh, this is Hamilton, the okay. little individual mine right there. And Bunkers is a midpoint of the layout. And at Bunkers, there is a Y that accesses the line that goes up to Tiger Mountain. And the other leg of the Y comes around to the little town of Mineral. Okay. Uh, Mineral has a mine, consolidated mines, as well as some facilities uh, that distribute to the local community. There's a little lumber yard, a fuel depot, general merchandise location and the offices of the mine. So the mine is a pretty busy spot with loads of ore going out, empties coming in, supplies coming in, um, and so on. So Russ, is, is there a name for this location where we are? Well, this is the first thing you see, and with the mine here, we called it Rock Hill. Okay. It's not necessarily a station, it's just a point on the map for our, to reference as we do the uh, uh, 
the switch lists. Mm -hmm. It connects to bunkers, which is the midpoint of the layout, and bunkers is then uh, access to the little town of Mineral, which is on the other leg of the Y. Okay. So this must be the highest part of the layout in Tiger Mountain? This is Tiger Mountain, and it is an area where uh, logs are and log cars are assembled from the cutting areas into train sets, and then the trains are periodically moved down the main line to the mill. Okay. There are some uh, additional switching spots here, including a commissary and the offices and then uh, some maintenance facilities up there. So I have actually four or five additional moves to make during an operating session, in addition to just running the train set down. Okay. And is that train, like, is it a daily log train or? Yeah, you know, in an operating session, there'd be two. Okay. Two sessions. And uh, that run takes about uh, 45 minutes to complete the down and another 45 minutes to come back up. So when you're operating, about how many crew does it take? Um, four people can run the, the set. Six people will work very well. Any more than that, we run into uh, too many people in the, in the aisles. Sure, okay. But most of the area is pretty open except for the one choke point just right at the end of Tiger Mountain here. So we noticed Tiger Mountain is what, about a in real world, about a foot higher than Coal Creek? Yes, I wanted some real elevation change on the layout. The ruling grade on the, this branch basically is 4%. So um, I'm at 43 inches at Coal Creek, and I'm up at uh, 56 inches or so up here at, at uh, Tiger Mountain. Okay. Tiger Mountain is an area on the layout that simulates the location of um, a collection point on the railroad where uh, log loads from the cutting areas are brought down and assembled into complete trains and then these trains are periodically, periodically taken down to the sawmill. Now, there are a number of other points up here where cars are switched, have a commissary here, have a car repair shed up there, a shed that is uh, used to maintain uh, caterpillars and other equipment. Up here we also have a cattle pens, uh, actually for sheep. My wife is a knitter and I needed to have some source of wool on the layout. Right. So they're here in the Y and um, so there'll be a movement of, of cars in and out of here, particularly in the spring and, and, uh, and fall. And this generates quite a bit of additional traffic. Often we'll run trains with log loads going down with other merchandise cars in the train set. I have one black sheep appropriately. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. So. Oh, well, Russ, thank you for having us at the Coal Creek Lumber Company. It's been a fantastic shoot, and we've just loved getting to see your work. It's good to see you again. I appreciate what you're doing uh, to spread interest in the hobby. Thank you. Yeah.